This is the pit stop. Hi, I'm Tom Pitt, and I've spent the last decade repairing and maintaining vehicles, my own, my customers, friends, and families. In this video series, I'm gonna show you what you need to know to get things taken care of on your own vehicle safely, efficiently, and cost-effectively. In this episode, we're gonna be talking about lights, headlights, tail lights, turn signals, emergency flashers, and backup lights. All vehicles have headlights. They help you to see the road, and they also help you to be seen. Let's take a look at how these work. Now we're using this van that's been wrecked and lots of parts from the front have already been taken off as a little bit easier way of us seeing the actual inside workings. To remove a headlight, you're gonna remove fasteners or pins, depending on how the vehicle's made. Once the headlight assembly is out, you'll have one or more plugs in the rear. You push down on the clip and pull it out. Then your assembly can be taken out. Looking at the rear of the headlight assembly, you may have caps or rubber plugs around each light, the high beam and the low beam. To remove those, you'll twist and pull out or just pull out depending on the style. On these, they've already been removed, so we can move on to our next step. Once the cover's been removed, to take the headlight bulb itself out, you're going to pull the plug. On some, they'll just twist out. On other styles, there's a spring that you have to push in and pivot out, and the bulb slides out. It's important to know not to touch the glass part of the bulb with your fingers, because the oil on your hands can cause the bulb to blow prematurely. This bulb also may be very, very hot from operation. Bulbs can reach temperatures exceeding 150 degrees Fahrenheit. And looking at this bulb, you can tell that the filament is still intact. On a bulb that's blown, you may see a dark spot, you may see a spot that looks like silver, or you may see the filament in two or more pieces. To reinstall the bulb, again, making sure not to touch the glass part of the bulb, we'll carefully insert this into the back. While holding tension on it, we'll push the spring back into place and make sure that that's secure. Don't forget the very important step of plugging the bulb back in once you're done. Fuses are parts in a vehicle that may cause electrical components not to work correctly or at all. Let's take a look at how to check fuses. First, we'll locate our fuse box. In this vehicle, it's under the hood on the driver's side. To gain access to this, we're gonna remove the cover using the clips on either side. We'll set this aside and expose the fuses. We'll remove the fuse puller that most fuse boxes will have in newer vehicles, and we'll use that to clamp around a fuse, put tension on, and pull it out. The fuse box cover will often have a diagram on the inside to indicate which fuses control which circuits. The fuses are somewhat transparent, so you can see the filament as it goes from one side to the other. A fully closed fuse like this indicates that current can flow all the way through and the circuit should work correctly. A blown fuse will look to be in two different parts and will have a break in between the left and right sides. This keeps electricity from flowing and kills the circuit. To replace the fuse, we can use either our fuse puller or just by hand. We'll put the fuse in gently and push it in firmly after it's seated to make sure that it's in. Finally, we're going to reinstall our fuse puller where it goes as a courtesy to yourself or the next person to do service on the vehicle. Then we'll reinstall the fuse cover and we're ready to go. Now that we've got our headlights taken care of, let's move to the rear of the vehicle 
and check out those tail lights. The tail light housing in the vehicle will house tail lights, brake lights, turn signals, and backup lights. Now, not unlike headlights, tail lights are going to vary in the way that they come out. On this vehicle, there's a screw in the top and one in the bottom. Let's take those out so that we can expose the wiring and the plugs in the back of this housing. To remove this tail light, we're going to remove the screw at the top. We'll remove the screw at the bottom. And then there are clips holding this into the body. Once removed, we have access to all the bulbs in the back side of the house. There are multiple bulbs in here. To figure out which one coincides with the light that you're looking for, you can look at the front. And if we're looking for a backup light, we can follow that around to this side. With basically all tail lights, backup lights, brake lights, a simple twist and pull will remove the bulb from the housing. To remove the bulb from the socket, we'll push in slightly and turn counterclockwise to remove it. In this example, you can see the filament is completely intact in this bulb. To replace the bulb with a new one, you'll line up the marks from the bulb to the socket, push in on the spring tension, and give it a twist clockwise, making sure that it's in solid. And then to replace the bulb in the housing, we'll set it in, and again, give it a twist. Finally, we'll install our tail light housing back into the vehicle. You may notice that there are clips on the top and bottom going into the body of the vehicle. We'll align those along with the screw holes on the side. We'll install the screws at the top and at the bottom. Well, looks like that's all we have time for today. Until next time, this is Tom Pitt reminding you to keep it between the lines and the shiny side up.